What's up everybody? Justin at SK Greenhouse and today we are going over the best deer resistant shrubs for your landscape. Let's jump in. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Justin and I've had the privilege of managing this beautiful garden center SK Greenhouse for the last 12 years. And through that process, I have been able to find some really good deer resistant shrubs. Now some shrubs are going to be a lot more deer resistant than others, like the barberry. I've got a couple of them here, and boy, look at those contrasting colors. This is Barberry Admiration. This has become my top Barberry, my favorite one. Look at the variegated red and gold leaves. That gold edging is absolutely beautiful. Now this Barberry here is gonna stay nice and compact, only about two foot tall, two foot wide. And then the Limoncello Barberry, beautiful. Now what I like about this one is it leaves out gold, but in the fall it starts turning orange. Yes, it's beautiful. It's going to get about three foot tall, three foot wide, and if you don't know about barberries, you're missing out. This is probably not just the most deer resistant shrub I'm going to talk about. Drought tolerant, heat tolerant, and great in full sun. Now if you want something with a little more height, we can talk about two more barberries. We've got Orange Rocket and we've got Golden Rocket. Now these have very similar growth habits. As you can see, they're growing pretty columnar. They're gonna get about two foot wide, four to five foot tall. So these are great for corner plantings or and if you need like a backdrop or a shrub that gets a little height on it, these are great. And again, oh, let me tell you about Orange Rocket. It's dark red now but when it leaves out in the spring, it is truly orange. I love it. Now some other deer resistant shrubs, you know, I always talk about arborvitaes. Now I'm not gonna mention those in this video very much. They have relatively good deer resistance, but the problem is in the winter time, you know, especially when deer are rutting, if there's nothing else around, they will eat these. So. They're not making this video, but you know what is making this video? Nandinas. We've got Obsession. We've got Flirt. Hey! We've got Lemon Lime. And we've got Blush. All right, here's, here's the thing about them. Obsession, three to four foot tall, Love this feathery texture. Look at that. Now the red is going to be more pronounced as the weather is cooling off, which it is, which is probably why I feel this good right now. We have Flirt Nandina. This is the most compact Nandina on the market. It's only going to get about two foot tall, two foot wide. All these are evergreen. Let's move on down to the Lemon Lime Nandina. Now this one's a little different than your typical Nandina because it stays a nice lime color uh, the new growth is a bright chartreuse green with the older growth being dark green beautiful this one's going to get about three to four foot tall and wide looks really good with dark color shrubs like the lower petal i'm going to talk about in a minute and then we've got the blush pink nandina now this one replaced the old school one known as firepower because this one does not get leggy. It's also compact. We'll stay around two and a half, maybe three feet tall and wide. Now, Blush has the broad leaves. Check them out. Not the feathery leaves, the broad leaves. It turns red in the winter time. Yes, when everything else is looking dull and blah, this is gonna be a beautiful red color, evergreen. How could you not want this in your landscape? And the deer will not be munching on this. Look at these beautiful azaleas. They're not making the cut because deer will eat those blooms right off. So we're not going to be talking about azaleas today. Sorry, azalea. But we are talking about Laura Petalums. I love this one. Here's Cerise Charm. We got Jazz Hands. Crimson Fire. 
and Jazz Hands Mini. Look at these four beautiful lower pedalums, all very deer resistant. The only trouble you might have is if you're in a zone colder than seven, let's say you're in zone five or six, these might not make it. So just go ahead and scratch these off your list. But if you're in zone seven through 10, these can be great for adding a lot of color without getting mowed by the deer. Let's talk about Crimson Fire first. This one here is going to get about four feet tall and wide. Now this is probably one of the most popular lower pedalums. It's been out a long time. It's a good old standby and it looks lovely with lighter green color shrubs or gold shrubs. Now this is also known as a fringe flower. So in the springtime you see beautiful little pink neon blooms get covered. Cerise Charm. This has become my favorite lower pedalum. And the reason is it's got a black foliage to it. It's going to get about three foot tall, three foot wide, evergreen. And yes, you get those stunning pink blooms and the contrast is lovely. Now, what is this lower pedalum right here? The Jazz Hands Variegated Lower Pedalum. And as you can see, it is very much variegated. Now, I will say the thing about this shrub is it's going to get some height to it four to five foot tall and wide. So what I would use this for is a backdrop, foundational planting, or maybe a, a medium uh, screen or hedge. And this will look absolutely beautiful, but not as beautiful as the, they're both beautiful. This is also Jazz Hands, but the Jazz Hands Mini, not the Jazz Hands Variegated. Now the Jazz Hands Mini is actually mini. It's going to only get about a foot and a half to two feet tall and about two to three foot wide. Now let me tell you about lower pedalums. If you want them to stay tame, you will have to prune them occasionally and you prune them after they bloom in the springtime so that you'll have a good flush of blooms the following year. We've got the Cryptomeria Globosa and the Cryptomeria Dragon Prince. This one's been out longer. This is Cryptomeria Globosa Nana, which is dwarf. But let me tell you, even though it says dwarf, this will still get, get about four to five feet tall and wide. So the good news is it's slow growing. Deers don't like it. Deer don't like it. And it's evergreen. But let me tell you, this came out last year or the year before. Might even been the year before that. I don't know. It's new to me. It's Dragon Prince Cryptomeria. And what I love about it is it is much slower growing, much more compact only gets about two foot tall, three foot wide, and for a beautiful foundational shrub that's low maintenance, this one's great. Now, let me bring you back. This is not a bad shrub. It just gets a little bit bigger. I prefer this one if you're going for low maintenance. Oh, part to full sun, very drought tolerant as well. Abelias are on the list too. Now this one's Abelia Radiance, one of my favorite ones. This one's gonna get about two foot tall, three foot wide, beautiful blue, beautiful white blooms in the spring, and then scattered blooms through the summer, even into fall. That's why you're seeing a little bit of blooms now. While you're up close, Al, look at the variegation. You got a green leaf with white edging. Now, if somebody has a dark brick house or a darker colored house, I love using this shrub because the contrast is outstanding. Put this in part or full sun and it's gonna do excellent. Moving on down to the candy corn, Spirea. And if you don't have candy corn, you can look at First Flame. You can look at all the double play candy corn series. They're pretty deer resistant, even when they bloom. And this one's got a beautiful purple bloom in the summer. We sheared these back to get this beautiful fall color. So it's not going to be blooming right now when it typically would be. But the new growth is cherry red. And then it turns into this pineapple new growth, followed by some more red leaves on the very top. This is super colorful and super compact. Gets about two foot tall, three feet wide, very drought tolerant, good in containers, and will thrive in part to full sun. Now we have the gold mop cypress and the king's gold cypress. 
This is not the same shrub. The difference is gold mop's gonna get about four to five to six feet tall. King's gold is gonna stay about two to three foot tall. So we got the dwarf version of essentially this. Now they're both evergreen. I love the needle-like texture. Isn't this just absolutely gorgeous? It's a texture that the deer do not like. It's a little rubbery for them, I think. So King's Gold, <coughs> King's Gold, <laughs> part to full sun, drought tolerant, great heat tolerance, very low maintenance. So if you want to put it with something like this Cerise Charm Lore Pedalum, that is a deer resistant combination. If you want a little more height, you could put this one with a darker lower pedalum, and that is gonna be absolutely, incredibly stunning. So what I've talked so far about is mostly part to full sun shrubs. Now I'm gonna give you a series of shade shrubs. So hang on right there. This is Mountain Fire Pierres. I love it because it has beautiful bright red new growth in the spring, but in the winter time, look, it's already setting up these buds. This is gonna turn into white plumes about late January. This is good in a lot of different zones. It's gonna get about three to four feet tall and about three feet wide. So a little taller than wide, evergreen, and it does love shade or part sun. <laughs> now we have Alyssiums, or another name is Anise. These are evergreen shrubs for shade that will really brighten up a dark corner. Beautiful, bright, banana yellow foliage on both of them. Now the difference is, you're looking at them and you're like, I think it's the same shrub. Nope, banana peel is a little more dwarf, about a three by three. This one's gonna get about five feet tall, four feet wide, but the deer seem to shy away because it has a nice little licorice scent. And anytime deer gets confused with the fragrance, they can't detect their enemies and they just tend to stay away. You better believe these are good shrubs for deer resistance. You, see what I did there? This is the U fastigiata. This uh, fastigiata is just more upright, columnar. It's the Latin, trying to get fancy here. But this is a great corner planting shrub. It gets about four to five feet tall, only a couple feet wide, and it's very slow growing. Ewes can take sun or shade. Now in Southern exposure, it's better to keep them out of the afternoon sun. But in some places, it's, it's fine in all day sun. Now, this is Korean, uh, Korean gold U. And it's similar to this one. Again, very, very slow growing. So if you need something that you're not gonna have to prune a lot, this is great. Now it will grow on up about four to five foot tall, but it makes a wonderful accent with that green and gold texture and color. This is Golden Dragon U. Out of all these, my personal favorite, because in a shady area where the deer is munching everything down, you want something to kind of brighten that up. And there's none better than Golden Dragon U. Now this has a spreading habit that will get about three to four feet wide, but only a couple feet tall, making it perfect for a low maintenance shrub. This is also a great one. Duke Gardens U, developed at Duke University. Very good drought and heat tolerance. It's gonna to grow about three foot tall and wide. Gets, don't let this fool you right now. It grows very, very dense. It, it responds well to pruning and the tough texture really deters those deer. And the last one is a prostrate U or a spreading U. And this is almost like a ground cover. It only, it doesn't get much taller than you're seeing here, but it will spread three or four feet tall. So it's really good to put in the front and use a different shrub as a backdrop. All these perfect to resist deer. Now let's talk about some blooming shrubs the deer won't touch. Some would think blooming shrubs are out of the question when it comes to deer resistance, but these some right here are not. Let me highlight a couple at a time for you. These are pugster butterfly bushes from Proven Winters. 
I love these. Now, some I've heard some rumors stirring around that butterfly bushes are invasive. These new varieties are sterile. Don't worry, they're not gonna spread like wildfire. As a matter of fact, these are actually very compact. These are only gonna get about two to three feet tall and wide. They start blooming in late spring and they go all summer into fall. Look at these beautiful blue balloons. This is Pugster Blue. And this is Pugster Amethyst, which is more of a purple bloom. These are great in part or full sun. Caryopterus. <laughs> this is also known as Bluebeard. Now this comes, uh, th some of these are blooming blue. This one's called um, Beyond Pink. Sorry, I forgot there. This one's gonna bloom pink. It gets about two and a half to three feet tall and wide, so it's perfect for small yards or landscapes. Great in part to full sun. But what I love about Caryopterus, it's a late bloomer. So in late summer, fall, you're gonna get blooms when hardly anything else is blooming. Here we have the Bloomerang Lilac Bush. And this one's great for the south because it can take a lot of heat and humidity. It's not blooming now because they bloom in the spring and it's not spring right now, it's September. But I love Bloomerang Lilacs or any lilacs for the fragrance. And even though you think it would draw deer near to them, it doesn't. It actually deters them again because they can't smell their predators when they're overwhelmed by the sweet smelling scent of a lilac bush. This one's gonna get about four to five feet tall and three to four feet wide. Great in part or full sun. And if you need a blooming shrub, this thing is gorgeous. Up next, I've got a couple of deer resistant shrubs that are excellent. Their texture definitely repels deer. Check out Party Lights Osmanthus. Now you can barely see some new growth here. In the springtime, this thing gets covered with pink and cream new growth, absolutely beautiful. And then the old growth is this darker green. This is an evergreen shrub. Gets about four to five feet tall, maybe three to four feet wide. Perfect for a small hedge or foundational plantings. This is relatively compact, very drought tolerant, and part to full sun is where you wanna put this one. Now, this is Color Guard Yucca. This is not only deer proof, it's actually grandchild proof neighbor proof you proof you don't want to touch this one it is kind of prickly but boy does this look good in rock gardens or just anywhere where you have a lot of full sun parts full sun's good but it can take that hot afternoon sun poor soil conditions extremely drought tolerant year-round cream and green variegated foliage this one's going to get about three foot tall three foot wide and if you just want to throw in a different texture to kind of break up the monotony this is a great shrub boxwoods are very deer resistant and very versatile this is the sprinter boxwood it even says deer proof on the side now the reason i'm saying it's versatile is because it can take sun or shade it's perfect for small to medium hedges border plants foundational plantings this one's going to get about two to three foot tall and three foot wide and it has beautiful, soft texture. Wagalas are pretty deer resistant also. This one is Sonic Bloom Red. There's also a pink version of this, but they're great as a backdrop in your landscape. This one's gonna get about five foot tall, and in the spring, you have the most beautiful red blooms. It absolutely gets covered, and if you wanna attract hummingbirds to your garden, this one is a must. Put it in part to full sun, and it's gonna do great. Let's talk about a few grasses that are highly deer resistant. These look great when you throw them in with shrubs just cause of the texture. All right, this is Shenandoah red switchgrass. This is a native prairie grass. What I love about it is when it leaves out in the spring, it's green and it has a little burgundy tint to it. But by the time cold weather comes, the whole thing just turns red. It's absolutely gorgeous. Very drought tolerant, put it in part to full sun and this is gonna be a very high performing plant that'll get probably about three to four foot tall. This is a dwarf fountain grass known as Hamlin. And as you can see, this time of year, you get those highly sought after plumes. Put this one in part to full sun. Again, dwarf, only about three foot tall and wide. And this will add just a wonderful texture to your landscape. And let's talk about chameleon blue stem grass. 
it actually doesn't have blue stems. It's more of a white, green, and red grass. Now, you've seen me talk about Carex sedge grasses before, but the only thing about these, in full sun, these don't perform so well. They need more shade, so if you have shade, these are great. But the chameleon blue stem can take sun, and that just looks gorgeous with shrubs. Uh, it's great in part to full sun, very drought tolerant, and very deer resistant. Let's talk about a couple more shrubs. This is Blue Star Juniper. Now, when I say juniper, a lot of people think of the ground cover. This is actually a shrub type juniper. It only gets about a foot tall, a couple feet wide, year round blue foliage. Put it in part to full sun, and it's going to definitely deter those deer just because of the textures kind of tough. And then Rainbow Lucotho. This is another good one for shade. Afternoon shade, morning sun is perfect uh, for this plant here. Look at the new growth. You got ivory and green. Uh, some of the leaves are just pure ivory. And then you got pink new growth. This one, if you keep clipped, will stay about two foot tall. If you don't clip it, it might get about three foot tall. It will spread to about three or four foot tall. I mean, wide. <laughs> And if you put this in a shady area, it's definitely going to brighten it up. One last shrub I'm going to show you that is highly deer resistant. Come on back here. We've got the bright and tight cherry laurel. This is an excellent evergreen, more almost like a small tree, naturally pyramidal shaped, no pruning needed. It has evergreen leaves that are nice and glossy check that out the balloons in the springtime are absolutely gorgeous now laurels in in our southern exposure are best in afternoon shade they can tolerate part shade filtered light dappled light i actually had a lady in here the other day who had a shady spot in her yard where there was a retaining wall and she needed something to soften it up and we went with this right here because it gets the perfect height, about six to eight foot tall, five feet wide, and it just always looks nice and manicured. Well, there you go, folks. There are my top deer resistant shrubs. Did I miss any? If so, let us know down in the comments what shrubs you have had success with in terms of deer resistance. Also, there are so many of you that are watching the channel that have not yet subscribed. So if you haven't already, go ahead and do so. I'll give you time right now. And in the meantime, watch this video right here. It's about low maintenance shrubs. You're going to love it. And until next time, become a plant person. What's up everybody? Justin at SK Greenhouse and today we're talking about 10 deer resistant shrubs and it's actually 30 so let's jump right in. Over here we got the Cryptomeria Japanese Cedar. This retains the Gold Blows Banana. Look at Golden Dragon you. <laughs>